Today you're going to learn how to grow heirloom tomatoes and then harvest the seeds so you can grow a new garden the following year from the seeds that you saved. Now if you're first starting out trying to grow heirloom tomatoes, then the first thing that you're going to need are to get some heirloom tomato seeds so that you can grow your tomatoes in order to harvest those seeds for your next year's garden. And if you're interested, I'll post a link below to some heirloom Cherokee tomato seeds that have worked great for me. These tomatoes have a red body and a dark top and they're super sweet. Also, I've not had to buy these seeds for several years now as the past several tomato gardens that I've grown have been seeds that I've saved from the previous year's garden. But now since you've got the seeds, if you live in a cooler climate like I do, which is a northern midwestern state, you'll want to plant your seeds indoors in late February or early March to give them a head start. I will just take a recycled growing pot and then fill it with regular garden dirt that's good and damp. And then I drop at least two seeds per pot and I only plant them about one fourth or one eighth inch deep or so. I always plant at least two seeds per pot and that's because not every seed will germinate so by planting multiple seeds per pot this pretty much guarantees you that you'll have at least one successful plant per pot. And then I place them next to a window that has a lot of sunlight coming in through the window. And I water them every time that I see that the dirt is starting to become dry. And then once the seedlings get a few inches tall, if more than one seed has germinated, then I'll just pluck the smallest plant or plants and leave the biggest one to continue growing. This way they aren't competing with each other. And then once it starts getting warm outside, I mean warm during the day but too cold at night to plant them outdoors yet, then I'll start hardening the tomato plants by taking them outside during the day, just a little bit at a time. When plants are used to being inside, a sudden and permanent change to outdoors can be a little too much for them. So you have to get them used to the actual direct sun by temporarily putting them outside a little at a time so the plants get used to it. So the first day I'll only put them outside for maybe an hour or so before I bring them back in. Then the second day I'll leave them outside just a little bit longer and then the next day a little bit longer and so on. And I'll just keep repeating this process until I am able to leave them outside all day long. And then when the chance of any overnight frost have gone and it's safe to plant your garden, then I'll transplant my seedlings to the garden. And just a quick tip, these steel tomato cages are a lot better than the cheaper aluminum ones. And then I just let my tomato plants grow over the summer and I will use the tomatoes for stews or for homemade spaghetti sauce or whatever we desire. Now, when it starts getting closer to fall, I'll grab a couple of the larger tomatoes which I'll harvest the seeds from. Now it's best to slice them horizontally as this method exposes more of the pulp and the seeds that's inside the tomato. But after I slice them, then I just squeeze the seed filled pulp into a cup of water. Now this method is really easy and works great for me because again, I've not had to buy new seeds for several years now as every year this method works great for harvesting the seeds for a successful garden the next growing season. And what you're doing here is the seeds have all of that pulp that's kind of sticking to them and by soaking them in water over a few days time, the water will separate the pulp from the seeds. And then over a few days, the seeds will sink to the bottom of the glass of water and the pulp will either float to the top of the water or it will stay suspended in the water. And then I give the glass a quick stir and then I just set it aside until the next day. And then what I will do is, at least once a day over the course of the next two or three days, I'll just give the glass a quick stir to help the pulp and the seeds to separate. And then I'll just set the cup of water to the side again. And then after several days, it's time to pour the pulpy water out. Again, the pulp will pour out with the water while the seeds will stay at the bottom of the cup. Now, because the water is so orange and pulpy when you pour it out, I'll usually add some clean water to the seeds to help rinse them out a little bit. And then I'll pour that water out too, because this just helps for you to have cleaner seeds. And then I just dump the seeds onto a plate and start spreading them out so they can start drying. Now it's pretty common for the seeds to dry and stick to the plate as they dry so I just use my finger to get them loose. And then I just leave them on the plate to continue drying. And then after a day or so and they appear to be completely dry, then I just make up a seed packet so I know what they are and when I harvested them. And then I just place them in that paper packet and then I just store them in a cool dark place like a closet over the winter time. And then when it gets late February or early March again, then the process just starts all over again. I plant the seeds into the growing pots, put them next to a sunny window, 
When they get two or three inches tall, then I'll pluck the smallest of the plants. Then when it gets warm enough outside, I'll start hardening them. And then when any chances of frost are over with, then I'll transplant them into my garden. And then later in the year, I will harvest a couple of the large tomatoes to save their seeds. So I hope you found this video extremely helpful. And remember that you can find a link to these heirloom seeds that's been successful for me down in the description box. And if you would like to learn the easiest way that I have found to grow a ton of sweet potatoes from just a handful of sweet potatoes, then click on the video that should be appearing on the right side of the screen just about now. Anyways, folks, if you made it this far, hey, thank you very much for watching, and I pray that you have a good night.